All right, up next, Harman Kardon ST7. So this video is going to be a little different. This is not a Goodwill find turntable. This is, uh, to make a long story short, one of these walked into one of the shops about six weeks ago, and I absolutely fell in love with the turntable. Not the highest quality turntable. Definitely some creative engineering, but I think these are fantastic. I just love them. So I bought another one. This one wasn't working. Um, there's a really good series on these uh, Trevor's Bench. He has like a, th I think it might be like a three hour video, part one on going through this, the kind of the long way to get it to where it's working. Um, I mean, if you want a comprehensive video series on this turntable, I, I plan to do one. I'm gonna carve it up into smaller chunks. Watch Trevor's uh, Trevor's bench. Watch his uh, watch his channel and check it out. What I'm going to do today, though, is I'm going to show you kind of the common fault on these. So let me plug this in. <clears throat> All right. So turntables on. Turntables on. Is the turntable on? Now it's turntables on. So it'll spin, and now I do have a light out here, but again, this is not a, I'm not starting the series on the shed. I just want to do this one quick fix. So what's supposed to happen is, tone arm moves into position. Let me remove stylus. Tone arm goes down, let me make sure it's weighted, All right? And what's supposed to happen is the tone arm is supposed to move that way. It does this, and I'll show you this in the back, but there's a there's like a rolling pin. And there's actually um, it's an o-ring that is wrapped around the spindle that also drives that rolling pin and on the back of the tone arm here there's a barrel that has another o-ring and those o-rings disintegrate after 40 years right so what happens is the rolling pin is rolling the little barrel makes contact with it you adjust the speed by turning the angle of that barrel right and that's how the linear tracking works and then you just you work that adjustment to adjust how quickly the tone arm is moving across the record. Ideally, you want to keep it aligned, right? And it moves consistently, right? With consistency across the record. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I have changed that small O-ring on that barrel without a complete disassembly. Like I said, Trevor's bench takes this whole thing apart. Um, but I'll show you for those that aren't inclined to do that. And for those that don't want to mess with removing tone arm wires and the tone arm assembly and all that stuff. I got some speakers in my way here. Let me move these. Business is still good. All right. So a couple of screws to remove. This plate comes off. Uh, wrong screw. This plate comes off. There's another screw on the other side as well. So we can pop pull that out. Uh, it's easier to remove this case as well. Two screws here holding this in position as well. getting yelled at and it's going to be hard to see this but let me see if I can zoom in and show you all right so see that see the screw there's a screw 
Oops, there's a screw, there's a nut. This is a plastic bracket and the barrel sits right in there. Right. If I turn this adjustment screw, I can get it to turn and show you the barrel. And that thing's not budging. So anyway, the barrel is, actually the barrel is down, the barrel isn't here. That's a screw that holds that clamp together. The barrel is right down here. Right? So you can see that. In the middle of that is a, is like a, a cutout, a groove to where the O-ring sits in there. So the easy way to get to that Sometimes the tonar or the the, uh, the platter has a C clip. This should have a C clip. It's missing from this one. So you remove the platter, remove the belt. Let me show you the innards of this. So here's the O ring that loops around this pulley here that drives this. Again, to me, it looks like a rolling pin, right? Now, it's important to pay attention to the orientation of this. Um, if you end up removing this O-ring from this pulley, I've done it to where I don't remove it, right? But you want to make sure that you get it, because if you get it backwards, right? If you get it backwards, so in other words, if this top pulley is on the left side, right, instead of around the right side, then it'll actually move backwards. So you're just you're reversing the orientation and reversing the motion. All right, so, um, and it's also typically easier to remove this top plate as well. Um, but I think I can do it without doing that. You have to have a really small Allen wrench. And what I'm gonna do first is remove, and I, I may have to take this top off. But, so, turn that. There are two screws here. And I'm not backing them all the way out, I'm just loosening them enough to where what I wanna do is slide, slide this out like so. And I'm going to have to run inside and grab my driver. I'm going to have to take this top off because I need to remove this bracket. So I'll be right back. All right. Fixing my dryer. So my, my driver was in the house. Heating element died in my dryer. So I have to replace it. All right, so next step to remove this bracket. It looks like it's a lot of work, but actually it's not too bad. All right, so I want to lock that in there. All right, so what our goal is, is to, oh, I forgot. We also have a pulley over here, and we need to remove this pulley as well. This little gear, actually it's not a pulley, it's a gear. going to do is slide sorry if you're laughter in the background <laughs> so we want to get this 
this rolling pin, we want to get it out of the way is what our, what our goal is here. So get it out of that side, get it out of this side. This will allow us to remove the barrel. Now, I've had success doing it this way in the past. Let's see if I can get a light down there. So, well, actually, let me do this first. So here's the adjustment screw. What I want to do is I want to turn. Oh goodness, they're so loud out there. Yeah. All right, I may have to wait until they're done because <laughs> now the dogs are barking. But see in there, see you can see. Oh gosh, let me pause. Okay, so let me see if I can get some more light in there. A couple of lamps I can. Mm, doesn't really help much. But there's a pin, right, on either side of that barrel. And last time I did it, I was able to just kind of pull the plastic just a little bit and then pop that pin down. Or pop the uh, pop the pin out of the, the little groove on here. And it's kind of hard to do this with the camera here. It was much easier last time I did this. So kind of see, I'm just kind of pulling apart just a little tiny bit. You want to be very careful. Now I may have to remove that screw, and if I do, then we're getting into the the really long repair, but see how I just kind of popped that out. And then the reason why we dropped this bar down was because this gives us enough room to pull this out. Again, I'm like, I just don't know what moved there. All right, so there we go. So this pops out just like that. So there's the piece. And notice how there's this groove here, but there's nothing sitting on it. There are the remnants of something there. First, you need to clean this off, and then I'll show you what I do when I put new... Uh, O-rings on this. I don't have a ring to actually fit this, but I have some smaller ones that I put I put three or four on here and I can typically get them to work. So let me clean this off the smile call, then I'll come back, put the rings on and show you what that looks like. 